we are February. We're going to talk about Sobe today. It's going to be presented by me, Jeff. I'm Devin. I'm Connor. I'm Zach. And I'm Nick. We're going to be going over the history, the environmental factors, marketing plan, the case analysis, and then our new innovative idea. So starting off with the history. Uh, Subway was founded in 1965 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Subway has three core principles. Never stop improving the Subway brand. Always provide exceptional service to valued guests and offer high quality menu items at a great value. So the owners for Subway are Peter Buck and Fred DeLuca. Subway only started because Fred, a 17 year old, he needed money to pay for med school. Asked Peter how to pay for it, and they started Subway. Some of the environmental factors consist of political, social, technology, and I'll get to legal and economic. Some of the political factors include uh, global relations, such as Brexit in the UK. There were trade agreements that affected Subway's profits and stability. Some of the social factors consist of the consumer preferences, cultural menus, and having a social responsibility of um, giving the customers what they want and being truthful about what's in the sandwiches and having them be fresh. The technology factors, Subway is now doing automatic slicers, which improves on the freshness of the meats, but it's not cut in factories anymore and it's more cut on site and you can watch your meat be sliced if you're early in the day along with online ordering through subway apps and media presence. For the legal and economic, Subway as it's a food company needs to abide by FDA rules and regulations, be sanitation and under the FDA you're required to be transparent about which ingredients. Economically, since Subway is a global corporation and or company, they have to take an account exchange rate and economic stability around the world. So in terms of current marketing objectives, there's really three major points that uh, we wanted to touch on. Uh, the first thing, obviously Subway offers a very diverse menu. Uh, that is one of their main points. And if you've ever been to Subway, uh, you can see the large uh, station where you can spec out your sandwich as well as a wide variety of pre-made sandwiches featuring those same ingredients. Uh, speaking of ingredients, Subway also really likes to push the fact that their ingredients are fresh with uh, their famous slogan, eat fresh. And along with this, uh, Subway is also very big into franchising their location, which allows them to reach a much wider range across the world. Speaking of having a wide range across the world, Subway has locations in over 100 countries, and the best way to take advantage of this uh, fact is Subway segments their markets by offering specific items that are unique to the tastes of each of these locations. So for example, uh, the sandwich pictured here features stuff like wasabi and shrimp. This is one that's offered in Japan, and uh, it's, so it, uh, takes advantage of the fact that people's tastes around the world are very different and makes their food seem more appealing to people in these areas. I'm going to quickly go over the four P's and SWOT analysis. So their product is their uncold, healthy, unhealthy, uh, very customizable sandwiches with uh, chip string and cookies. Price, uh, sandwiches go from $48 and they can be more depending on combos or um, specialties. For promotion, they promote through their athletes and their advertising athletes to promote themselves. And uh, they also use their slogan, Be Fresh. For place, they are in 30, they have 37,000 locations in over 100 countries. Slot. For slot analysis of strings, they have large available customized subs, one of the largest fast food chains in the world. Athlete brand company, uh, the weakness, they are very inconsistent at services. And they're also controlling franchises where they are also outdated. Opportunities, there's a growing market for healthier food. They could expand on delivery options and also a, introduce a drive-through option. Threats, 
there's a large fast food market that's super competitive, and they've also been in many lawsuits that have made them look bad. So for our case study, uh, we ended up doing Jimmy John's as our competitor. Uh, to quickly go over their advantages over one another, uh, Jimmy John's uses a much more convenience-based approach. Uh, they specialize in having their pre-made sandwich options, making them quickly, and uh, having them delivered quickly as well. Whereas Subway uses a much more health-based approach. Um, they specialize in being healthier and fresh uh, compared to other competitors and having a much more customizable menu. Similarities, target market, pricing, sponsorships and endorsements, and then celebrity use in advertising campaigns, all very similar. So to move into more of our innovative idea, we're gonna be launching a project for improving customer satisfaction, improving our customer relationships by adding curbside pickup. Uh, we're gonna freshen up the menu to remain eating fresh and kind of refresh that, and then also we'll talk more about so first, uh, why we think that all subway locations should have uh, curbside pickup is because it improves the purchasing experience for customers. In today's day and age, a lot of times people are not going to be uh, ordering on the phone anymore or visiting the physical store locations to order food. Um, it's done on websites and apps. And um, at the bottom of these websites and apps, it's very easy to select an option to have curbside pickup. And it's also going to promote the use of Subway's mobile app. Um, just out of curiosity, does anybody have the Subway mobile app in here? Okay. All right, a few of us. All right. Um, so that brings us to consumer convenience. Um, contactless transactions is super important in today's day and age if people are worried about getting sick or getting someone else sick. Um, it's going to be way faster. Um, they just run it out to your car when you get there. You're going to be skipping out on the lines um, and any hassle um, waiting. And then also avoiding the other costs um, associated with delivery, um, including apps like Grubhub and DoorDash, where it seems like you've got $25 worth of fees when you're done. Uh, using one of them and then also according to Business Insider this increases uh, business profitability through customer retention and consumer satisfaction um, leaving consumers happier with the service that they're getting. In addition to next questions, how many of you like to stand in line? Okay, and how many of you have smartphones? So this shows how popular curbside pickup can be so you can skip that line, it's easy to use, you can download the Subway app, and it's popular. On the bottom right graph, uh, according to NCR Voice, they took a survey about how many people and how frequent they would use curbside pickup. As you can see, there's a good half, at least once or twice, was so a good base, but there's still the 7 and 11% that would use it pretty frequently. To go more about the popularity, uh, post-COVID-19 really changed how the world works and more people are more quicker to go and don't really want to be in the shop. So a survey showed that 85% of shoppers have increased their curbside pickup. To go along with that, according to Medalia, uh, two-thirds of millennials choose curbside pickup as their main delivery option. Some of the other innovation advantages to curbside pickup is you can do extended hours. So if you haven't noticed, some restaurants have been closing their lobby and they've been doing only drive through for about the last hour. So this can actually focus to purely curbside pickup, which gives you an advantage of doing the curbside pickup compared to the lobby because you have more hours. Some of these places that have done it have been Panera Bread has opened that up and that's worked pretty well. Next is location sharing. With curbside pickup, Companies have been starting to incorporate GPS sharing with the app. So customers could approve to be tracked with their phone and it would let the subway know that they're there. So there's no wait, there's no line, and you don't have to call in. Right now you have to call in and say I'm here for my curbside, but you could be completely contactless and you just show up and wait to come out and give you your There can also be exclusive deals and promos that come with. Curbside pickup, 
like through the app, there can be promos that if you use the app, you can get a certain discount off of the sandwich, and you can further extend that to curb cut. So as well as the previously mentioned customer satisfaction improvements, uh, we also believe that Subway could consider looking more into leaning into the health food side of their brand because as I previously mentioned, Subway's one of their biggest commissions is to promote the freshness of their ingredients. And uh, along with this, we think that uh, adding some more like healthier options to their menu in the form of uh, different items or different versions of items that they already have would be beneficial. Uh, it's kind of hard to read, but the graph here shows a uh, percentage of people who plan to eat better uh, and plan to eat less healthy, which is the small one, uh, just to give you guys a little help. <laughs> uh, along with the menu improvements, we also believe that Subway, considering the fact that they're trying to promote health, should potentially be a little bit more transparent with the ingredients that they already have and show you what you're really putting into your body. First uh, proposition that we would like to bring forward is the addition of a whole wheat wrap to their menu. Now, some of you guys out there might be thinking right now that Subway does already offer wraps, which is true, they do, but the wraps that they offer are not whole wheat, they're multigrain. And the difference between the two is that multigrain wraps just contain different types of grain, whereas whole wheat contain the entire thing, which has a lot more nutrients in it. As well as this, whole wheat wraps are also lower in calories, and because of the extra stuff that's in them, they're higher in fiber. Uh, another thing that's in, uh, nice about Subway wraps, I don't know if any of you guys have ever ordered one, but uh, Subway stocks their wraps with extra meat because of the shape of them. So that means that in the form of a wrap, there is more room for protein, while the vessel, in this case being a whole wheat wrap, contains less calories than a piece of bread. Uh, hummus is another thing that we think would be a great, great thing to add. Um, it is high in protein, vegan friendly, and fiber rich. Uh, they used to have it in 2014, but they got rid of it because it didn't, it didn't have any good results. But because of the graph showed earlier with the 48% increase in people wanting to eat healthy, we think that then reintroducing it would be good because it could go with uh, veggie dips, um, hummus wraps, and there's actually hummus salads. And World Vegan is a website we're looking at, and people are calling to vegans are calling to get homeless on the subway menu. Uh, building a little bit more off of what Seth was just saying, speaking of vegans, uh, one major issue that Subway seems to have is they don't really offer very many vegan options. In fact, uh, the vegan option that they did offer, they still do, uh, the vegan patty, they ran into a little trouble a while ago with the fact that it was discovered it did contain egg, which they have since fixed, obviously, that's a big problem. So in order to sort of capitalize on the fact that a lot more people uh, are starting to take interest in health and veganism as well, uh, Subway could consider offering some more vegan-friendly options, for example, tofu. Tofu is something that you can do a lot with. Uh, you can flavor it very easily, uh, and this could allow them to take advantage of some of the various sauces and stuff that they offer right now while being in the form of a sandwich or a wrap, like I previously mentioned. Uh, and as well as a whole wheat wrap, uh, Subway could consider offering a lettuce wrap as well. Now this is something that Jimmy John's, our competitor that we identified, currently does fairly successfully. And we figured that Subway should also consider implementing this onto their menu because it offers an even lower calorie version of the vessel that contains the proteins and other vegetables while also uh, not being very expensive because lettuce is already in all of the Subway locations, so they might as well consider offering it in another form. So in addition to adding healthy foods, we're trying to be more transparent with our nutritional information. So as you can see, they already have calories on their menu. That's a menu used by almost every Subway. It changes up a little bit, but that's what they have on each and every menu. We're trying to get all of these onto the menu. So right now, the calories are on the menu because the FDA approved a act in 2014 where 
every location or every restaurant with over 20 locations have to have calories on their menu. So the reason they need, they should be transparent is because right now, Subway, their whole brand is to eat fresh. That's their goal. That's what. Pe that's why people come to Subway. When you go to Subway, you're thinking you're going to be eating fast food that is healthy. So right now, they should be trying to take control of that. Why they should take control of that is because they need to take control of that is because right now we have a problem in America with us not being as healthy as every other country and Subway has a brand where people are going in there to try and eat healthier so with people trying to eat healthier they could be posting things around their store trying to give them rule of thumbs for items like these where it's giving people the option to look at how to eat better without actually forcing them to stare at it. It's just kind of giving them that extra thing to look at while they're waiting in line. So the reason people, so the, all these facts are according to the National Health Service um, in, the UK, in the UK. And these are just some of the facts that we could be putting on a billboard to kind of explain. So some general ideas is you want to eat the same amount of calories as you burn off in a day if you're trying to maintain the same way. If you're trying to gain, you eat more. If you're trying to lose, you eat less. Total fat, you don't want to eat more than 25 to 30 percent more fat than you would calories. For protein, the general idea for protein would be each gram of protein would be equal to each pound of body fat in, or each pound of weight in your body. That's how much you're going to eat. And for sodium, Subway's sandwiches in, do have a lot of sodium. Right now, they are, that's what their main claim is for why they are unhealthy. Every site you look at, why Subway would be unhealthy, they're calling for sodium. And their bread has a lot of it in it. So what Subway could do is just drink more water because the more water you drink, the more sodium you're flushing out of your body. So that's kind of the way they could combat what everybody else would be saying in their health approach. In addition to what I was saying, with being transparent on all of these things, being super easy on the menu, it gives Subway kind of that first mover advantage or there are other fast food places that you have to go into research and look at the exact information to kind of conclude, Subway continues to evolve in the market, improving the customer relations and offer high quality. You might recognize some of these words as it is Subway's three core principles. 